welcome to the exciting world of REPL-driven development with Emacs. So what is REPL-driven development? REPL-driven development essentially lets you write bits of your program interactively, right? All the while staying in the comfort of your favorite IDE and, and getting some immediate feedback. Um, so let's let's jump right straight in, right? So using this uh, REPL-driven de development package, if we just evaluate this, right? Now, whenever we press Control X, Control J, we can run arbitrary JavaScript, all right? So for example, uh, we're gonna try to build up, so now that we have a, a JavaScript runtime, we're gonna try to build up a web server out of it. So our goal is to make an endpoint like this, all right? So there's nothing happening here and we'll work up to it. And the way we'll work up to this is, let's see here, there's a little uh, diagram here is as follows. So now that we have a JavaScript runtime, we're gonna add features to it until it can do what we want, All right? So let's, let's, that sounds like a lot of theory, so let's just dive, dive in. So now that we have a REPL, right, Control X, Control J gives us arbitrary JavaScript. So let's, let's try evaluating some of this. So Control X, Control J, right? And now we see, you know, a bunch of numbers, All right? So to, to get an idea of how to build our web server, to get an idea of how to teach this JavaScript runtime to be a web server, let's start off with something just a bit simple, which is the FizzBuzz program, right? just to get an idea of this REPL-driven development thing. So right here, you know, I press Control X, Control J, you can see right there, the REPL node, and I evaluate all these things. I get a bunch of numbers up to 40. And FizzBuzz is pretty simple, right? You see multiples of, uh, of uh, three, emit, emit Fizz. Right. So now if I if I run this, right there we go. I see a bunch of fizzes everywhere. All right. Let's make the uh, number of things just a bit smaller. And if we can also now incrementally we can add on to this. All right. So if we see multiples of five, we'll do a buzz. All right. So there you go. You can see all the way up to you know, there's 15 indices, fizz, you know, so forth and so on. All right. For fun, let's change this to 16, all right, okay, and so now you can see all the way from 0, 0 is a multiple of both numbers, and 15 is a multiple of both numbers, oh, we need to add one more clause to get the fizz buzz, all right, so if a number is a multiple of both, we say fizz buzz, all right, and we can run this, all right, and we see our output, you know, 0 gives us fizz, and 15 gives us fizz, what? We've made an error. 15 is a multiple of both three and five. So by running our program right here incrementally, we saw our er error right away. We didn't have to build this and compile it and then run it to see our error. We saw our error and we can just move it up, move it up. If so, if we get the multiples of three and five first, we can avoid this error. Now if we run all of this and look at that. 14, 15 is fizzbuzz, just like right here. All right. So that's neat. All right. So now that we've met a bit of REPL-driven development, let's let's actually teach this existing uh, JavaScript runtime to be a web server. Okay. So let's delete all this. We don't need that anymore. Okay. So first off, we're gonna again we want to use Control X, Control J, but I also want I want documentation. I want help. You know, I don't really know web servers and all that stuff. So let's let's run this. All right. And so now control X, control J, as before, gives us a REPL, uh, but now it also gives us documentation for, for things when we don't understand them, okay? Of course, let's get to Express and Axios. And now that we have those guys, let's actually, you know, now that we've made our app, right? Does that do anything? Is it live? Let's go look, all right? Nope, nothing happened. We didn't start a server yet. Okay, no problem. Let's actually start a server. Control X, control J. We start our server, all right? Oh, look at that. We have a server. Ah, is that cool? Look at that, man, all right? All right. Well, it, it can't do anything, but, but we have a working program. Th two lines, look, Ma, I got a server in two lines. Now, if we wanna get documentation on this listen thing, we can, you know, Control X, Control J gives us, it runs uh, JavaScript code, but Control U, Control U, Control X, Control J, will give us documentation on, on listen, 
All right. So that's that uh, little part we asked for earlier. Right. And from this documentation, we can say you know, how it works, what we can do with it, right? you know, other interesting stuff. So that's neat you know, if, if you like reading docs. Okay. And yeah, so now that we have, our, now that we have an endpoint, right, let's add a route. Okay. So let's say control X, control J. That got highlighted gold, it got evaluated. And now it's control X, control J. And now we have a new route. Oh, look at a bunch of stuff happened. Results truncated. But now we have this new route. So let's visit that. All right. And this new route, what can it do? Let's see. It says hello. All right. Hello times one. Hello world. And if we refresh, hello too. All right. Refresh a few more times. All right. And the number increases. So look, look, ma, a very, a very simple route, all right. Now here's the interesting thing. Because we refreshed five times, what do you think the value of visited is going to be? Here we're in the browser. Here we're in my IDE. Control X, Control J, tells me visited is six. Because we started off with one, and we incremented after the fact. Post increments. So that's neat, all right. So now let's let's actually add an endpoint to do what we want. Not, not, a, not a silly high endpoint, but let's make an about endpoint. All right. So remember our, our handy dandy diagram over here? So we have a runtime, we're gonna modify it, and then when we're done when it can do what we want. All right. And we just wanna get information about the user. That's all our uh, server is gonna do. Okay. So let's go back here. So our about isn't defined. All right, let's define it, okay? So now that we defined it, okay, excellent. Let's remove stuff we don't need anymore, just for show. Okay, so we defined this about, let's refresh, all right? Oh no, shucks! We called a method here called HTML, right? We wanna, we want our endpoints to write some HTML, but we never defined this HTML function. So let's define that, okay? So here's our HTML function, you know, super fancy, add a div, you know, all that jazz. Just write some HTML, my man. And we refresh that, right? What? Now there's another error. In HTML, info is not defined. Where's that? Right here. Oh no, that's okay. Let's now define it, right? The important thing is we made our endpoint and we want our endpoint, the response will be to send some HTML and our HTML is gonna be stylized like this, and then it's gonna have a JavaScript of objects. So we have you know, a top level down approach. So now let's define our info. Okay. And now that that's evaluated, let's refresh our endpoint. There you go. Object, object. Okay, so we made a bit of a typo here. What's this object, object nonsense, all right? So we have to convert the JS object into a JSON string. So let's let's fix that. All right. I can just evaluate this new definition of HTML. Okay. And all this does is it's the same definition as before, but now we stringify our info, you know, and add some indentation. And now that we have a new definition of HTML, let's move that up here and delete the old one. Okay. Excellent. Alrighty then. Um, so this is great. We have an endpoint, right? It's kind of it's kind of janky, right? Like at least the timestamp tells us stuff is changing. So maybe maybe we can do a bit better, all right? So let's redefine HTML yet again to look look a bit prettier, all right? So evaluate that. Run this. There you go. Look at that. That looks a bit prettier, all right? Okay. So we have our JSON object. Every time we refresh, the time changes, visitor changes. So that's, you know, not too bad. All right, and then we can move that up here and ax the previous one. Uh, ax, um, oh, getting ahead of myself here. Delete this, delete that. Uh, anyhow, oh, I deleted too many things. This is what you get for live coding and not paying attention. All right, so let's delete the old HTML because we don't need that anymore. 
All right. And now we have this new one. So let's just keep that. Okay. Alrighty. But let's let's try to make this payload even better. All right. So let's. Um, uh, you know, so we we knew what we had it, we built it, but let's add on a bit more to this payload. In particular, let's get Axios in here, so we can make an API call to this uh, JavaScript uh, cheat sheet. Get information about that JavaScript cheat sheet, and now let's redefine info not to be information about the user, but instead let's define it to be information about this repository. If we refresh that, all right. Oh, repo is not defined. Whoopsies. Let's define repo. Control X, Control J. Now repo is defined. And let's. There you go. Welcome visitor ten. Here's a URL. It tells us about this cheat sheet. It's got a bunch of followers. All right. And then you can refresh. And so it's a simple endpoint. But the the idea was to see how REPL driven development looks like. And uh, yeah, man, or, or friends, you know, I think, I think this is pretty neat stuff. Start your REPLs, you type in your favorite editor, you know, you clean up your code like we did here a little bit, get a bunch of, get rid of all these comments, all right, get rid of that. All right, there you go. Looks like a very, you know, not, not too bad, not too shabby, all right? And, um, you know, eventually we can close this server if we want, but... Yeah, I think REPL-driven development is a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, bye. Oh.